Hey guys, Jennifer here with The Family Fudge, and today I'm talking about the Instant Pot. Now the Instant Pot is a relatively new kitchen gadget, but when I learned how quickly Instant Pots can cook food, I couldn't wait to order one. But you guys, I actually ordered my Instant Pot on Amazon Prime Day last year, and it sat in the box for months before I actually tried it. Because to tell you the truth, I was a little bit intimidated. So in today's video, I'm gonna share some tips and tricks, some easy recipes that are perfect for you if you're just starting out. Now before we get started, if you haven't already, I would love it if you'd hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up if you'd like to see more Instant Pot recipes just like this. Now let's get started. The first thing I ever learned to make in my Instant Pot were hard boiled eggs. Now technically the Instant Pot steams the eggs, but it does such a great job. It's an excellent place to start. The first thing you have to do is insert your steam rack and this should come with your Instant Pot. Next you're going to pour just one cup of water into the bottom and then place your eggs on top of the rack and you can put as many as you want. Next, you're going to place your lid on and twist it into place. So far, so good. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your vent on the top is closed. This is really important. There's a venting side and a sealing side. Make sure it is sealed. Next, you're going to push the manual button and then you could enter anywhere between three to five minutes. Three minutes if you like a soft boiled egg and five minutes if you like it cooked all the way through without overcooking. When the cooking time is up, you're going to do a quick release of the pressure by turning the knob to venting. And I like to use a pot holder to protect my hand from the steam. Next, I'm going to put my eggs directly into an ice bath. This is gonna make sure that they don't overcook and it's gonna help make them peel so easily. These hard boiled eggs are great for egg salad, potato salad, or just to have a quick snack. Now after I learned how easy these are to make in the Instant Pot, I've never boiled eggs on the stove top again. So once you've mastered the hard boiled egg, it's time to move on to some baked potatoes. They are so easy in the Instant Pot and perfect if you're trying to feed a crowd or if it's a holiday and you have other items in the oven. Now just like with my eggs, I've started by adding my rack and one cup of water. Next, I'm going to add in my potatoes. I'm using a medium sized russet potato, which I've already washed. I'm not gonna peel these because I actually like the skin on mine. Once my lid is on, I'm gonna make sure your vent on the top is closed. Then I'm going to hit the manual button and I'm going to set the time for 17 minutes. If you're using really big potatoes or if you're putting a lot of potatoes in your Instant Pot, you may want to increase your time. And by the way, you guys, this is also a great way to make mashed potatoes. These potatoes came out perfectly. They are tender all the way through, but they're not mushy and they're not falling apart. The only hard part about these potatoes is deciding what to put on them. For me, I like a little bit of salt and pepper, sour cream, and some green onion. Super easy, but super delicious. The next thing you're gonna wanna learn to make is some shredded chicken. Having shredded chicken on hand is such a lifesaver. You can throw it into so many dishes and the Instant Pot does it beautifully. And you don't even have to defrost the chicken first. You can totally put it in frozen if you'd like. It will take a little bit longer, but not much. For this, I'm not using my rack at all. I'm placing my chicken directly into the pot. This is about four pounds. You could definitely make more or less. It's totally up to you. Next, I'm going to pour in one cup of chicken broth. If you don't have chicken broth, you can just use water. And then I like to add some seasoning to my chicken. So I'm gonna throw in two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, two teaspoons of onion powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, followed by salt and pepper to taste. I don't go crazy on the salt and pepper though because I wanna use this in other recipes. Next, I'm going to hit the manual button or you could hit the poultry button if you'd like. And I'm going to set my timer for eight minutes for this amount of chicken. Now, if my chicken was frozen, I would probably cook it for about 13 minutes. Now, when my time is up, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick release on this. And I do that because I don't want my chicken to dry out. If I let the steam naturally release, my chicken can become dry. As you can see, this chicken just shreds apart so easily. You can just throw it into any recipe you want, or you can even freeze it and have it on hand when you need it. 
Next up, we're going to make Mississippi pot roast. Now, normally this takes all day if you wanna cook it in the slow cooker, but in the Instant Pot, you can make it in about an hour. And I'm going to start by hitting the saute button on my Instant Pot. I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to the bottom of my pot. And then I'm going to add in my beef, two pieces at a time, I don't wanna overcrowd them. Browning them on all sides is gonna give it a delicious flavor. When the beef is all nice and browned, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the Instant Pot. Then I'm gonna throw in one packet of ranch powder, followed by one packet of brown gravy. Now I'm actually gonna use a gluten-free one, but you can use any kind you like. Now just like when you do any Instant Pot cooking, you're gonna want some liquid in there. So to add some added flavor and to help tenderize the beef, I'm going to add some Coke, about one cup. You could substitute this with beef broth or water if you'd like. Next comes my favorite part, the pepperoncinis. These aren't very spicy, they just add a nice tang and saltiness to the pot roast. I like to add about eight in there, just throw them in whole, followed by a couple tablespoons of butter. Next, I'm going to place my lid on. I'm gonna make sure my valve is on sealing. Next, I'm going to hit the meat or stew button, and I'm gonna set my timer for 40 minutes. I want my pot roast to shred apart easily, but I don't want it to dry out. When the time is up, I'm gonna turn my valve to venting, and when it's safe, I can open her up. Now you guys, this is some seriously good pot roast, and you've also created a really yummy broth. You could thicken it and make a gravy. You could serve this over noodles or mashed potatoes, whatever you'd like to do. And you guys, if you're not into beef, you can totally make this with chicken. I hope you found this video helpful today. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know if you'd like to see more in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.